Yep. Hello, everybody. I'm Moody Hadi from SMP Global Market Intelligence. Today, we're talking about applications of distributed na natural language processing and finance. Um, we're going to go through one specific example that's really about spreading financial statements, which are balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statements for counterparty assessment using the SMP CapIQ and CapIQ Pro platforms. Um, as you may know, you know, counterparty financial statements are really important for managing basically credit risk, especially for small and medium sized businesses and private companies. Uh, financial analysts really need to distill out the relevant line items to basically do their analysis and calculate the, the liquidity uh, and probability of basically default. Uh, and we're using a lot of computer vision, natural language processing to make that process a lot easier. So today's presentation, we're gonna go quickly over an overview of who SMP Global is, why are we doing this? What is the input data we take care of as data scientists? how we basically built the pipeline and what is the output and of course conclusion and further extensions. So overview of SMP Global, we're effectively uh, four major business lines, the ratings agency, which uh, rates basically large companies for uh, uppercase ratings um, for probable default, the S&P 500 and Dow Jones indices business, uh, S&P Global Market Intelligence, which is basically a, a data analytics platform, and S&P Global Platts, which is an energy focus area. Today's presentation is going to go over the offerings uh, available at S&P Global Market Intelligence, which is the basic data analytics business. And risk services, we really focus on risk management applications, which include obviously credit risk, capital market risk, and operational risk areas. Um, so this is not part of the ratings index or energy side of the business. It's purely a data analytics side presentation. So a common problem we've identified at S&P Global is that a lot of our uh, customer base actually sits on large uh, volume of unstructured data, whether they be basically PDF documents or they be basically big data they've been collecting through transactional processes and uh, you know, we've been very good at basically finding insights and mining that data into domain specific signals. So, you know, non financial corporates and banks, for example, have large exposure to small and medium sized businesses as part of their supply chain lending activities. Um, they typically, when they issue a loan, they will ask for not just the interest and coupon payments, but they will also ask for transparency around how the company is doing, which basically typically means. Uh, getting a, fin a proprietary financial statement, meaning it's a bilateral statement that's provided by the business to the bank or to non-financial corporates to um, to to basically understand what their um, uh, outlook looks like. Uh, these are not public domain documents, like unlike the large public entities who actually typically publish annual reports and quarterly reports. These are bilateral. Uh, documents that are strictly private. Um, so the processes today are typically very human dependent. They uh, analysts typically will get the document over an email or a secure uh, folder, open a PDF, and they will type the numbers into an Excel sheet and uh, gauge their basically exposure to the, the client. So obviously the pro process is slightly you know, inefficient, costly, and slow. And uh, the spreading exercise makes it difficult to audit and store that information. So it's somewhat unreliable. So what we wanted to do is basically provide a solution that's algorithmic that allows uh, the humans to actually spend a lot of their time on really gauging the risk rather than doing data entry type operations, make it more efficient, make it more scalable and definitely faster and auditable. Um, so, you know, one thing, you know, generally speaking, the Risk Management Association defines spreading as basically effectively what I just described is taking some bank transfer information from a borrower's financial statement and really inputting it into a spreadsheet. Like obviously today we go beyond a spreadsheet. Today we basically have a database and desktop platforms that allow us to not only pull the information in the spreadsheet, but also uh, find the relevant 
line items to actually highlight them for counterparty assessment or analysis. Um, so, you know, in theory, you're basically taking an unstructured document that sits on your laptop or somewhere else and then making it into the SP Global Market Intelligence Platform as though it was completely there to begin with, which is kind of a difficult problem, something that really is bespoke and unstructured becomes part of the existing templates and platforms that we have today. Uh, so what is the input data? Like the input data is typically basically uh, small businesses that they have, at the end of the day, they have image-based financial statements. So machine unreadable images, uh, machine unreadable text that come in PDFs. And these are typically balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. We expect all three to be there but sometimes they're not. So these documents are also can be noisy. So there could be, they could have been scanned, faxed, put in, in weird like structures. Uh, they're not definitely not standardized. They definitely have different types. So again, typically PDFs, but there's also bitmaps, PNGs, JPEGs, um, all different format types. They have different languages. So they're not necessarily all in English. Obviously they could be in, in, and um, French, uh, German, Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, um, as well as some of the Asian language like simplified Chinese. Um, and that basically mimics the client base that we deal with today, which are basically you know uh, global exposures, right? Uh, so you also need to handle that context. There's a large volume of those documents that are typically not just you know one or two companies that you're dealing with, you're dealing with a large number of exposures, uh, which means a large number of documents. And these documents are secured. They cannot, they're not public entities, so they need to be provided on a bilateral basis in a proprietary format. So long story short, I think this pictorial gives you an idea of what we're basically trying to solve for. You basically get a lot of strange images with basically water logging and and bitmaps and things like that the analyst is here trying to basically submit save and score uh, those images and clearly they're confused on how to basically go from here to there so today what they have to do is open one screen and then type them in and, and push them up right so what we've done is we've basically built an optical character recognition engine, an OCR engine. We we do pre and post processing. We'll get, we'll delve a little deeper into these things, but like at the high level, of image enhancement and table detection, we take this unstructured input, structure it into a series of data frames or a list of data frames, and then perform algorithmic assignment against them in order to not only match the item, like the line item description, but also the numerical hierarchy of the how the line items relate to each other. Um, and then we've obviously used a dictionary approach to do some of these tasks, as well as a completely auditable trail. But we've also integrated online learning here. So as basically a user goes in and says, hey, you know what? We didn't match like state taxes to the right area, or we, we saw a new line item. They can go in and interact with the desktop, do a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and give us some input on a specific line item that goes back into our online training. Uh, so you can really customize the option to get to basically the submit, save, and score uh, area. Um, you know, so like a kind of jumping a bit to the end, like you can kind of really take this unstructured document, use a desktop platform, and upload it as you can see here, and get a very clean output that tells you what year the document was processed, what fiscal annual areas, what the balance sheet and hierarchy looks like, how basically the line items relate to each other. And then you can basically thumbs up or trash or move on to cater the dictionary to your specific use case. And this is like immediate online training basically effect, right? Uh, once these line items are actually extracted, we call our existing suite of credit analytics models to actually provide fundamental scoring and probability of default calculations and liquidity coverage and business risk and assessments that we already provide today through, uh, through our existing coverage from the public company universe and, of course, the private company universe that we collect. So 
again, you're taking something completely unstructured and making it look like as though it was part of our structured offerings today. So at a, at a high level, like if we start decomposing the tasks that we need to do, right? We, we know we, we have basically a queue of documents that our folks are submitting. So we, the first problem is we need to prepare like an asynchronous basically pipeline that can that can handle that volume, right? So we have an asynchronous engine, and we'll go into technical parts a little bit later, that basically takes that input and then synchronizes it and processes it. Now, what does that container, what does that queue actually do? Well, the first thing is you need to take the input that the client is uploading. So if it's a PDF, bitmap, image, machinable text, you need to convert it into something that the OCR engine can detect, right? So in order to do that, we basically take it, convert it into a, take one document, split it into multiple pages, and then run a quick algorithm that does a fast table detection. Because at the end of the day, we're really dealing with financial line items. And they're typically in some form of structured tabular format. So we want to know if I upload a 300 page document, which out of that, how many pages actually do contain tables. So I can run a rudimentary algorithm against it to detect out of 300 pages, you know what? We have only 10 pages that have actually tables in it. So once that's done, we actually need to focus on those, say, out of 300, we focus on those 10, table, 10 pages, and then we really need to handle, um, we do a lot of pre-processing. So if the document is noisy, we need to figure out um, how to basically denoise it, how to handle skewing, how to handle rotation, sharpening. We use a lot of the image magic, basically, libraries in order to handle that. Uh, and once we kind of get it into a very strict and very organized format, we run it through our optical character recognition engine that basically has been trained on A4 size documents and actually kind of processes them. Right? Then we run a, a much more rigorous version of our table identification. So now out of those 10 pages that are clean, we've denoised them. We've converted them from machine unreadable text to machine readable text. Now what we really need to know, do is figure out out of those 10 tables, which ones actually contain balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement line items. So we run a table identification algorithm that goes through those pages, detects every table in there, and says, you know what, this table is like a balance sheet, income, or cash flow. And then we parse them out, right? We structure them. Now, basically, the fun part begins where we're really looking at now we know which tables we need to deal with. We know which ones are balance sheet, income, and cash flow. We need, really need to figure out how can we assign those individual line items in each table into our uh, financial, into our SP Cap IQ Pro and Cap IQ uh, glossary of financial line items. This effectively means uh, semantic matching uh, in English and a, a combination of that and uh, some some other algorithms that we'll kind of slightly touch on um, to actually detect when you say total revenue or or basically shipping and services, do we know where to put them in our mnemonics? Which means where do we assign that line item into the S and P Cap IQ glossary, right? At the same time, we can look at the numbers that we've extracted through those tables and realize there's a kind of a graph or a relationship between those numbers to each other, right? And what that gives us is the ability to detect how the balance sheet is balanced or how the balance sheet relates to the income statement. And from that accounting graph, we can actually highlight to the user if there are deficits or overages so that they can quickly kind of correct them or survey them or monitor them in a little more insightful manner. And this creates something of a s and Kappa Q standardization of the accounting graph, whereas there was none before because the user or the client who was actually building this document didn't think like that. They were just you know, balancing the balance sheet just like they would normal. But here we've actually created the hierarchy for them and implied it given what we know from the public uh, universe and as well as the private universe. So, you know, to kind of get into it a little bit more, I mean, this is sort of a linearized version of the pipeline, right? We've, we've, we've taken the language, the native language documents. We don't do translations currently for the, the English part of it uh, or the, the Latin based alphabets. And we basically run a lot of like sharpness, 
uh, detection, removal, rotations into our extraction algorithm in order to denoise them. Then in Python, we basically have pandas and, and, and series of coordinates that basically allow us to detect tables, clean them up in the structure format, and then kind of get them to the user in, a, in, in some manner, right? Um, what that means is what we can actually exactly match, we, we, we process through the assignment engine, which is a semantic layer that runs through multiple different voting algorithms, uh, including, you know, Jaron Winkler, uh, you know, Hamming, like a bunch of one. And then we see from the words and given our native language dictionaries, how they relate to each other in a probabilistic fashion. So if they relate pretty well, those are a direct assignment. If they are not, then uh, we highlight them as a fuzzy, fuzzy match for the user to verify. Um, we kind of augment this as well with the balancing hierarchy with basically looking at how the numbers themselves relate to each other. So if the numbers themselves actually relate in a very rigorous fashion, we actually imply that join and then apply the line item to it. Um, so we kind of think of it as a, you know, a, a full join sort of issue, full fuzzy join, right? <clears throat> Which basically relates to numbers as well as the line item. So there's a lot of basically a hierarchical kind of distances that we handle. And then once we, we've we classified those line items, we kind of give them back to the user to detect, did we do a good job or not? And given their input, uh, they can basically decide yes, you know, or no, that this is not. And then it goes back into our retraining algorithm for online training. We store all these overrides in our on our company level dictionary so that one user would actually help work with multiple other uh, users in the same company. And uh, they get back basically our mnemonics, which they can use into the scoring engine. The scoring engine literally takes those you know, factors that we have in, in our fundamental scoring engine and our credit model engine, and then just runs them just like we run today uh, with any other company in order to look at probability of default and loss given default and expected loss calculations. And this is all coming through a desktop interface. <laughs> which basically is built in JavaScript and basically interfaces that are coming back and forth through JSON uh, with the microservices so that the whole set is actually decoupled so that any other microservice can call, you know, the extraction engine or the OCR piece, the detection piece, or the processing or the scoring engine all in a modular fashion. <clears throat> that way it's stateless and then basically uh, allows us to interface with other uh, areas in the desktop environment without having to rewrite a lot of code and it's highly reusable. Um, so in the first place, I mean, again, we're all data scientists. We, we know um, dealing with basically, you know, JavaScript based or Node.js libraries is kind of different from what we're used to. Um, the first iteration, we really built this in, uh, in a prototyping phase using JSON and Shiny. So we actually built the engine in, in a combination of R and Python, um, and then basically created a simple web interface of how to upload and extract the document, uh, and then tested it out with a few kind of clients that are uh, leaders in that space, and made sure that that requirement and that analytical engine is actually pretty well covered before we actually started writing all of this into, into Python and R in production. And then having our desktop developers build the kind of interfaces in JavaScript. So that's kind of an important link for the data scientists to realize that like a fully functional prototype will actually refine the requirements gathering, uh, even with the product manager writing some of those stories, getting it ironed out into quite a few details is quite important. And then, you know, Shiny from our studio as well as Dash from Plotly has been actually pretty helpful in my experience and launching a lot of these basically sort of applications early on in order to gather much finer requirements going forward. Uh, once we kind of standardize that, then we basically kind of built this sort of API service that is really completely industrial strength, right? We basically, you know, statelessly decompose our modular architecture into uh, an area where we store information, which are the global dictionaries, the UI, the company level dictionaries, the API logs that create audibility. Then we build an asynchronous pipeline that allows us to take handle 
requests and responses through a hub that basically think of it as managing a queue of jobs. And that that queue allows all our clients base, despite demand, to have a very similar quick experience given the problem that they're solving. And then we basically, you know, we've, we, we know a lot of the private companies' information are typically basically um, smaller documents, like under 30 pages. So we've made sure that that can handle, it's not the first in, first out queue. It has some order of priority by the number of pages in order to handle like the clients who are actually doing a lot of work versus the ones who are basically uploading large number of pages. And then there's, there's more than likely less uh, private information in there. Um, and then once we have that, we've basically dockerized the whole pipeline um, and, and Python, and we've basically containerized it so we can scale up elastically as we kind of deal with worker pools and basically as we deal with requests and, and input, right? Um, I think the orchestration piece is really important. We've basically kind of, we can scale horizontally uh, by, you know, obviously by number of CPUs and we can elastically scale as the requests kind of come in and our queuing algorithm and our routing basically handles that on demand so we can spin up through AWS and through other services out there to handle the, the user demand as we see it. And this has actually combined the, the you know, if I go back a bit, we've combined the R and Python queue that we've built into something that is more production-like, that's a microservice that can vertically scale with user demand, right? Um, I mean, to give you an idea, this is actually how the Shiny app that we've developed in the beginning looks like. So again, very rudimentary, very simple interface. You've got like, you know, upload table in here. You've got basically selecting the languages. You've got the extract, uh, like effectively launching the extract algorithm that you want, uh, choosing what target model you want to run with, and then handling the semantic tolerances, you know, and, and doing some verification around it. Once you do that, you've basically uploaded the PDF in here, rendered it into a sort of a widget, right? And then once you hit extract, it basically produces this Excel-like output that shows you like what was an exact match, what was has a high probability, what was assigned, uh, as well as basically this lower screen, which tells you what mnemonics were mapped to what and why, right? What Here are the numbers that were extracted. This is a mnemonic IQ total, like current assets in this case. And this was an exact match and this like, uh, these kind of little icons are actually cues for you to kind of go back for the user to go in and out to the, to do a thumbs up and trash them. So what that means is a direct feedback. So for the analyst to actually feel very seamlessly integrated with the spreading of the pro, uh, with the spreading of this financial document without actually having a lot of um, uh, control over the algorithm, right? So it's, it's Comes very intuitive, just like when you use like Gmail or other tagging uh, options. Comes very easy, very turnkey for the analysts to do, right? Um, and then effectively, what they're really doing is creating for you a, a training set that you can kind of build your network against and retrain it without them actually realizing they're actually annotating and labeling for you. Um, so that was the that was the kind of the prototype piece in production. This is how it looks, right? Again, in production, it looks kind of similar, but the difference is like we've basically added the balancing engine that detects the the chart of accounts that does that fun full alter join between the numbers and the the line semantic distances to detect how the hierarchy of the cap IQ uh, accounting graph relates to what what's been updated or what is uploaded. And then created these mnemonics that kind of fall very seamlessly with our Excel templates and our CapIQ and CapIQ Pro desktop. And then obviously run our models um, for probability of default and, and credit calculations and liquidity coverage immediately. Like in risk gauge, you, you take an unstructured document and then basically convert it into something that looks like it was structured by our uh, rigorous day-to-day -day, like process in, in, in S&P. Um, and you get, you know, as a user, you would not realize that even that document came from a company that was not, that was private or bilateral versus something that is already covered by the regular processes today. 
uh, again, taking something completely bespoke and unstructured into our systems that gauges basically traditional risk uh, measures for credit, as well as like behavioral, which we have basically uh, through different parts of it um, linked it. So, you know, as you upload a document today, we know which entity you're uploading and our entity recognition knows if it exists in our database, what it relates to. And we can basically calculate additional like number of employees, management changes, additional behavioral sig signals that come beyond the financial statement line items. So in conclusion, we've kind of gone through converting an unstructured data set into a reliable, basically machine learning production pipeline in both R and, pipeline, and, and R and Python in an orchestrated scalable fashion um, for customers to actually interact with our interfaces and the data scientists to push them in front of like large scale customers uh, and create a lot of efficiencies and value in here. Uh, I wanted to kind of highlight my team, who's Viraj, Mikhail, Saeed, and Bin, who actually worked quite aggressively on, on this problem. And we continue to kind of deal with natural language processing and finance, uh, including not just spreading of financial documents, but as well as sentiment analysis and natural language generation uh, at you know, SMP Global Market Intelligence. And, and these complex problems keep coming to us over and over again. And we're happy to assist our client base here. And that's it. Thank you very much.